Hall of Fame announcer Eric Nadell joins you now here on 105.3 The Fan. And a good afternoon, Eric. How you doing? Good. I miss you guys. Miss you too. It is. It's good to hear your voice. It really is. And and uh, and we'd love to hear you on the call with uh, with this great start. Uh, Jared and Matt are doing a nice job, as I'm sure you are aware of. But you know, what what can you tell us about why why you haven't been around this season so far? Well, I've been dealing with some uh, mental health issues. You know, it started with uh, insomnia mm. um, back in December and then kind of led to anxiety and depression. And I've been getting a number of forms of treatment. And, you know, I'm starting to feel like myself again, starting to feel better every day, um, following the team really closely. And, and those guys are doing an incredible job. Um, and the Rangers have been really understanding you know, in not putting any pressure on me, letting me work things out. You know, mental health issues have become, you know, so prevalent both in the country and, you know, even even in Major League Baseball, three or four players have, you know, taken leaves due to anxiety already this year. Mm. Um, it's uh, it's something you know you you need to learn to 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 deal with, and and the fact that I've done this has. I think caused a lot of people, hopefully, you know, to reach out and get help themselves. I've gotten a lot of messages to that effect. Yeah, I mean, we salute you. I was saying when we first got this news after it had kind of settled in, you know, I, I think it's it's one of the bravest things that anybody's in your position has done because of the example that it, it sets for others. And it, it sounds like others are reaching out to you in, indeed. Yeah, well, fortunately, you know, there, there's not the stigma about mental health issues that there used to be. And I think that's why you're starting to see, you know, more and more celebrities and professional athletes. You know, Michael Phelps has been very outspoken about his battles with depression and, you know, several other really high profile athletes have done so. And, you know, that, that's one of the reasons I'm so glad to be able to do an event every year uh, for the Grant Halliburton Foundation that, you know, it helps high school kids, junior high school kids, even the educators and the parents to notice the signs of stress, notice the signs of mental health issues, and make sure that people, you know, reach out and, and get help and, you know, are not afraid to do so. Eric Nadell here with you on 105 Through the Fan. Well, Eric, it, it's great to hear your voice, man. We miss you, and uh, we can't wait to get you back in the booth. It's, it's good to hear that you're doing much better. You mentioned you're following the team closely. You've got to be super thrilled with what you're seeing right now after what was a struggling six years. What do you think of the ball club so far? I think they're incredible. I'm so excited. You know, just about everything's gone right. Um, it, it, they're playing so well. It, it's like It's almost hard for me to believe that they've lost 14 games. Huh. You know, they they gave away a few of those games in Cincinnati and, you know, a couple of other late-inning meltdowns. But, you know, they're playing close to perfect baseball. And, you know, the addition of Josh Young offensively, um, Leody Tavares coming out of his shell, Jonah Heim blossoming, uh, all of that has been, you know, just phenomenal to watch. And obviously we went into the season thinking the starting rotation was going to be fantastic. And it's been exactly that, even without DeGrom, you know, with Dunning stepping in and doing a, you know, a superlative job. It's It's been fantastic to watch. I really enjoyed it, but, you know, it's, it's, it's really hurt not being a part of it. Especially with these new rules, have you enjoyed the, uh, the way the game's being played now? Oh, it's fantastic. You know, I've been, I've been asking for a pitch clock for years and years, and I had also, you know, brought up the idea several years ago of limiting pickoff throws. And not many people were in favor of that when I first started talking about that several years ago. But I like that too. You know, I I love the the added excitement it brings to the game, and you know, stolen base attempts and stolen bases are up. Uh, Rangers not necessarily among them. They've been bludgeoning teams to death by such incredible margins. They they haven't really had to steal bases too much. It's Eric Nadell here with you. Do you feel like they're they're overachieving? Is you know how surprised are you by what they're doing, and and do you expect this to cool off or continue? I really expect it to continue because of the steadiness of the starting pitching. You know, it's hard to imagine this team going into any sort of extended losing streak when just about everybody 
in the starting rotation is is a potential stopper, streak stopper. Um, you know, unless they were to run into two or three, uh, you know, injuries in the in the starting rotation, uh, this team is, you know, they've got the ability to to do what they're doing. I think the whole season. I mean, playing at a, a 600 plus pace uh, doesn't seem in any way, you know, overachieving for for me. You know, guys are they're doing it without. Seagram, they're doing it without DeGrom. Um, obviously, the bullpen has had its moments, but you know, Will Smith has become very reliable as the closer now, and I think that's allowing Bruce Bochy to kind of set up setting the table in front of, of Smith now that you know, they've got a reliable guy at the end. Yeah, I wanted to ask you your thoughts on the bullpen. We obviously got scared to Dickens after the Cincinnati series, but Will Smith has definitely helped to solidify that with the closer role. What's been your evaluation of the bullpen so far? Well, it hasn't been the number one strength of the team, but, you know, Dunning did an amazing job when he was out there. Cole Reagans has been really good. Uh, Jonathan Hernandez, you know, pretty solid as a seventh and eighth inning guy. Uh they're uh, they're in pretty good shape out there. Obviously, if you're looking at one area to improve potentially through a trade, that's maybe where you would look. Uh, but they seem to be getting better and better. Do you expect a trade or two? At some point, you know, I know that Chris Young is going for it, and there's no reason not to. You know, here they are sitting with a, a three and a half game lead, and. It's an Astros team that's been beset by injuries. Uh, the Rangers, I think, have you know the opportunity to you know really put some distance between themselves and the rest of the division. Hmm. What what kind of uh, an impact do you notice or 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 do you see that uh, that Bruce Bochy is having at the helm with with uh, you know all the little things that add up to winning? Well, there's a stability there, you know, that I really love. First of all, he took a chance. Um, before the season started in in bringing Josh Young in the, and telling him you're my number five hitter, you know, and you, you're going to go through some struggles, but he hasn't moved him out of that spot, you know, and the fact that he basically has a top six in his order who are constant day in and day out, I think there's, you know, there's a lot of strength to that. Uh, the number two spot, you know, changes from time to time now with Seager gone, you know, but it's been pretty steady with either uh, Jankowski before he got hurt and Grossman occupying the number two position. And, you know, players like that, you know, as much as a lot of managers like to finagle on a daily basis, uh, I think players prefer it when they have a set lineup like that. And he seems to just have a really good feel for the bullpen. Um, He's got a track record. And in combination with Mike Maddox, I, I just love the way they've operated the pitching staff. What do you think about the West? The Rangers have won every series they've been in with the division opponent so far. I'm really on paper to me, they look like the best team. Uh, you know, there are easily perceived weaknesses as you look around the division. You know, Seattle has been hurt by you know injuries in their rotation. Uh, and, I think they've come back down to earth in terms of that one run record, which was so ridiculously incredible for the last couple of years. And, you know, I have no reason to believe that you know, the Rangers are on paper now are not the best team in the division. Well, Eric, looks like it's uh, it's coming up on time for your birthday benefit concert once again, and the auction is live. What can you tell us about that? Yeah, the concert is next Thursday at the Kessler Theater in Dallas. Danielle Ponder, who's this rising star, will be the headliner. And Daphne Willis will open the show, as she's generally done. She helped found this concert you know, 11, 12 years ago. And the concert's been sold out for a long time. We, we booked Danielle Ponder just in time. But the charity, the Grant Halliburton Foundation, which you know is out to – provide mental health resources for kids and teens and and young adults makes the bulk of its money from this event from the silent auction and anybody can bid on these items you do not have to attend the concert that night to bid on the items and we have some really unique stuff 
Um, we've gone in recent years and re recruited some of our favorite restaurants to host celebrity dinners. For example, uh, Al Bernays is hosting a dinner for six, you know, with Brad Sham. Um, Mike Bassick is going to do a lunch or dinner for six at Matt and Jared and I will do a lunch at Hurtado Barbecue, and mm. I'll do one. I'll do a dinner at Town Hearth. Uh, we even have Randy Galloway and Tom Grieve nice. uh, doing a lunch at Heim Barbecue awesome. in Fort Worth. And on top of that, Tony Beasley has agreed to do a lunch uh, at Lockhart Barbecue at Texas Live. Um, Taylor Hearn, you know, who I would assume at some point will be back and lives in the Metroplex is going to do a dinner for six at Knife. So we've got some you know, we've got some really great stuff. Evan Grant is doing a lunch at Rodeo Goat. And Tim Kalishaw is doing one at uh, Escondido. Uh, Derek Holland is going to uh, be the fourth in a foursome of golf that, you know, he's for at Las Colinas Resort. Um, Chuck Morgan is uh, going to host four people for an inning in his PA booth and record a message for for them, whatever whatever they'd like him to record. Michael Young is going to do a similar thing. He's going to record a video greeting. Uh, Warstick donated a special edition Ian Kinsler Texas Rangers Hall of Fame bat, which he signed, you know, in celebration of Ian's uh, entry into the Rangers Hall of Fame. John Blake is going to host four people at a game and give them a private behind the scenes tour of the ballpark. Wow. Oh, that might be my favorite item Jeez. right there. These are some of the things that, you know, you don't normally get in these charity auctions, but uh we'll we've got them live now. The the link is very easy to find. It's granthalliburton.org slash Eric Nadell. And it's all one word, Grant Halliburton, and it's H A L L I B U R T O N. Granthalliburton.org slash Eric Nadell, and the auction will end on the night of the show, which is Thursday, May 18th, at exactly 9 o'clock. And once you start bidding, you'll be getting constant reminders. And we urge people to use their phones rather than their computers. It's a lot easier to see the items and scroll through the items on the phone just the way that uh, the company that sets up the auction has it set up this year. Sounds incredible. We have shared the link for you, Eric, so hopefully we get a lot of traction there. Now, we had a KNC on before us. They had a fun baseball hypothetical that was going on, and I don't think there's anybody better to ask this question to than you. If you could take any Rangers legend from the history of the franchise and put it on this year's team, mm -hmm. who would you pick? Ooh, that's that's a great one. Um Uh, one more big bat, you know, wouldn't wouldn't bother me. Um, so, so a uh, like a Juan Gonzalez mm -hmm. or a, what if a I Ruben guarantee us? What if I guarantee us a sober Josh Hamilton? I'll take that. <laughs> yeah, I'll take that as well. I also wouldn't mind having a guy like Jim Kern. You know, okay. a reliever who can come in and pitch the final three innings of the game and, and come through the season throwing 100 innings with an ERA of 150. Ooh. That'd be uh, that'd be pretty good, too. Yeah, that would be Fantastic. exceptional if you could dial one of those up right now. Well, Eric, That's a great we, question, though. It, it, is, it is a fun one, and we definitely appreciate all, all those names from you. I know you're a huge hockey guy. Are you watching the Stars as well? Keeping my eye on the Stars, I'm really excited. I think Let's they've go. got a great shot. Yeah. Well, it is a Friday. I think it's appropriate to finish this by asking you what you're drinking and what you're thinking. Well, <laughs> given that uh, I'm I'm on the treatment plan for you know for depression, I'm not drinking anything alcoholic. Okay. So uh, I am I'm trying to be as healthy as I can. I'm trying to limit the sugar. So I am drinking just tons of tons of purified alkaline water. <laughs> and uh, what I'm thinking is that I'm just Terribly grateful for all of the fans who've reached out to me, shown their love and support for what I'm going through, uh, and for everybody at the Rangers, you know, for for doing the same. I, uh, my gratitude is just boundless, and and thanks to you guys for giving me a chance to talk today. 
Well, we love you, bro. And if there's anything we can do for you, uh, just let us know and we're all over it. So best Thanks of luck so in your event and the auction. And, and we salute you. We'll see you soon. There he is, Eric Nadell here on 105.3 The Fan.